Hi. This video is about how to establish credibility when introducing En-ROADS. Often you'll get the question, it'll sound something like, uh, excuse me, where did you get your data? Really, what people tend to ask is really, why should I believe this model? It, why should I believe it? And the short answer, you should just say, is that Climate Interactive and MIT Sloan built En-ROADS using the best available science, period. Often that's just enough, and it's more about how you say it than exactly the words that are being used. That said, there's a longer version that you may want to memorize or memorize much of. I don't usually say all of these things, but these are the top five things that you can say. People will ask, and you say that Climate Interactive at MIT Sloan built En-ROADS using the best available science using data sources such as the International Energy Agency, the IEA, and the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And all of the references, all of the equations, all the parameters are shared transparently on the website for Climate Interactive. And the model was tested against the suite of integrated assessment models from research bodies all around the world. And if somebody doesn't really agree with one of the assumptions, well, many of them can be changed in the assumptions panel in En-ROADS to see what the implications are. Those are the main five points. And we put them here uh, written down so that you can review them and memorize them, and they're in the facilitator guide. But what I'd like to do is unpack each of those five points to give you some more understanding of, of what's behind them. But for a real deep dive, go watch the full training and the full video on confidence building and testing of En-ROADS. All right, so the first topic, Climate Interactive and MIT Sloan built En-ROADS using the best available science and it's updated monthly. There's a new release every month with new features, but often to keep up with the latest science and the sources such as the IA and the IPCC. The key thing is that there are sources of data but people often think that the model is driven by these other models, as if we're just an interface on top of someone else's model. That's not the case. It is its own mathematical model that uses data in three different forms. So we pick up parameters from other models and from other research to learn, for example, every doubling of installed capacity of renewables reduces the cost of those renewables by so much. That is called the progress ratio, and we go to a study someone else did to come up with the number of 0.8. So we use parameters. The second is that we pick up structures. The carbon cycle was based on uh, a structure by Gudrian and Kettner, are the two authors of a way to think about the carbon cycle. So we learned a bunch of equations that were really useful to adapt into En-ROADS. And the third is we use data for calibration. That is, we run our model and then we put in a carbon price and see how it changes, say, emissions and compare our result against their result. That's a way to use data without having it directly feed into the model. The third point about the reference guide. So all the parameters are in this reference guide and you can, here's the front page and one of the views of the reference guide. There's a link here. So actually I'm going to just click on it and it'll open up on the website. Here's the reference guide and you can go and read all the sections about everything that's in the model. Number four, Climate Interactive tested the model against the suite of large integrated assessment models or IAMs from research laboratories around the world. Here is a graph from 2000 to 2100 for greenhouse gas emissions from three of those integrated assessment models. One is Remind Magpie in the triangles coming from Potsdam Peak in Germany, Message Globio, that's coming from IASA in Austria, and GCAM from PNNL in the United States. These are all a scenario of NGFS current policies. That is, what if the world follows current policies? And in an effort that was pulled together by the Network for Greening the Financial System. We see their results, we put in our scenario in En-ROADS, and we compare the two to see, is there a gap? If there is a gap, we could learn from it and improve 
the model. Similarly, we compare against other scenarios. The orange are the scenarios where the other models are following the pledges to the Paris Agreement, the NDCs, and the green line, the green dots here are for the scenarios of a net zero 2050 scenario. You, we input into En-ROADS similar inputs as their models and see what is the output. Here it comes. And now you can see our results relative to theirs. We compare against the others, look for gaps, learn and improve the model, and overall build our confidence in En-ROADS. So number five, you can go to the assumptions um, panel. And I'm going to pull that up here in En-ROADS. And this is right here under simulation, under assumptions. One can see many of the assumptions here and can change them. I mentioned earlier the progress ratio. One can see the reference and one can actually change that assumption and see how the world would be different under a different assumption. And the last point um, is just the leadership and the scientific leadership on our team. Professor John Sturman from MIT Sloan wrote the text, one of the main texts in the field of system dynamics modeling. And in particular, chapter 21 is a really important guide for us about how we build confidence in this class of models. That said, overall, someone says, where did you get your data? Why should I believe your model? Climate Interactive and MIT Sloan built En-ROADS using the best available science. Use the model, make a big difference, go get them.